All right, so in case you were not here, here is the lecture on Latin American Revolution, so you can get your active listening notes. So we briefly already talked about the Mexican Revolution, um, and so now we are going to be talking about Central and South America in general. But to contextualize this time period, I want to first talk about the types of people who were in Central and South America at this time. So there's going to be the Peninsulares, who are going to be people born in Spain. There's going to be the Creoles, who are going to be Spanish people, but they were born in Latin America. So both their parents are Spanish. Then you're going to have the mulattoes, or also sometimes called the mestizos. Um, that can be mixed with uh, African and Native and European ancestry. So a mulatto would be like an African person with uh, European ancestry, and a mestizo is going to be like a Native population person with European ancestry. Then we have the Native population, so Natives in Central and South America, no Spanish ancestry, and then the slave population. And also, this is kind of how they rated, ranked these people um, with like their rights in Central and South America. Peninsulares were on top, Creoles, Mulatos, Mestizos, Natives, and slaves were at the bottom. So here is a pie chart from your book. I don't like how they say Indians rather than Native population, but um, that is how it is. Um, as you can see, they make up the majority of the population is natives. The, um, then we have the European Peninsularis and Creoles, the mulattoes, the mestizos, and the Africans. So that's going to be the slaves. Okay, only 6.4%, which is quite a difference from what we saw in Haiti, right? So what is going to cause revolutions? What's going to start kicking it off? So Napoleon, if you remember him, He's going to actually conquer Spain in 1808, and he is going to remove King of Spain, King Ferdinand VII. Napoleon is then going to replace him with his brother, Joseph. So now Joseph is in charge of Spain and Spanish colonies. And so these Creoles, these Peninsulares, they're not going to be happy with that. They don't want a French person ruling over them. They're saying, we are Spanish. We should be ruling this land. There's no French people or almost no French people in Central and South America. Why should they rule this land? So this movement is really going to be led by the Creoles. They're saying if the real king of Spain is removed, then the people should have the power. And also think back to the Enlightenments. Um, the Enlightenment ideas are really going to be embraced by the Creoles. All right, so revolutions in South America. Simón Bolívar, he was a Creole. So born in Central and South America to Spanish parents, he's going to lead the Venezuelan War of Independence and successfully liberates Venezuela in 1821. Then he's also going to liberate Ecuador in 1822. On the other side, uh, Jose de San Martin, Martin um, also a Creole, he is going to liberate Argentina, Chile, and Peru. Um, and they're both going to unite to defeat the Spanish in 1824. So if we look at this section, they actually had a plan to kind of create like a United States, but a United States of South America. So it would have been all of these countries coming together to create a country called Gran Colombia. Um, this doesn't end up happening and all of these countries do just stay independent. Uh, so Mexico. Why is Mexico different? So this is gonna be a revolutionary movement led by mestizos and the native populations. So going back, that's gonna be the people on the bottom of society. So it's gonna be a lot more different. If you wanna compare it, think of those first couple as like the American revolution and Mexico as like the French revolution where it's more the poor people rising up. So there's gonna be the spread of enlightenment ideas again. So they're saying like, we should all have rights. Why are we being oppressed? Um, and then as we looked at the other day, there's going to be that cry of Dolores, El Grito de Dolores, from Father Miguel Hidalgo, who will call for independence to stop all of this uh, stuff. And again, he's a mestizo, so he's a mix of Spanish and native blood. Um, the uprising of the poor alarmed the Creoles and Spanish and will result in a loss of property. 
So Father Miguel Hidalgo, again, Mestizo, is only going to leave for about a year. He does get executed, actually. And then Padre Jose Maria Morelos, also a Mestizo, is going to lead it for a couple years. Um, he's going to get kicked out as well. And then Vincent Guerrero, another Mestizo, is going to lead the guerrilla warfare in 1816 through 1821. That's where you use like hit and run tactics. You hide behind things and then run away. Um, and it's very successful. A lot of old European countries were still using traditional warfare where they would line up and then I'll just get shot, which clearly didn't work for the British, but they continued using it for a little bit. So they are going to declare full independence in 1821. And then Mexico, I mean, Spain is actually going to come back and try to reconquer Mexico and is somewhat successful for a little bit, but they're going to finally defeat that in 1829. So most of Central and South America does become independent. So when do they mostly become independent? Haiti is going to be the first, as we talked about, 1804. Venezuela in 1811 and Paraguay. Argentina, Chile, Colombia next. Then 1821 is going to be a big effect. It's all kind of culminating Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Peru. Finally, Brazil is going to get independent from Portugal, so kind of separate from a lot of these. Bolivia, Uruguay are going to become independent. Dominican Republic is going to become independent. Again, it holds the same island as Haiti, but um, it is independent from Spain. Okay, so from Haiti, it's the same island, but it is going to be from Spain. I'm actually going to change that right now. And then 1902, Cuba gets independent from Spain, but they're kind of under American control for a little bit, so a little bit weird. And then Panama is going to become independent from Colombia. All right, we are going to watch a video, so make sure you watch that and make sure you do your summary.